Hello guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to be telling you about some of my top recommended shows to watch on Netflix. We've all been stuck in some sort of quarantine or lockdown now for a while and lately here it has been raining and storming so you put those two together and you get a lot of Netflix watching which is what I have been doing. During the school year I don't tend to watch a lot of Netflix because I am quite the busy gal but Having all of this spare time, I have finished, I think, three or four series completely. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to be telling you a little bit about each show, why I think it was good, and recommending it to you. But if we get to the end of this and you think there is something I've missed or that I should watch, please leave it in the comments so that I can spend the rest of my quality time watching some more shows. Let's get on to the first show. Okay, so the first one I have is a recent show. I think it might be a Netflix original. I'm not too sure, but it is insanely good. And that is Outer Banks. And I finished all 10 episodes in about two days. Basically, as soon as you watch it, you're gonna fall in love with either any? You're gonna fall in love with either of the four main characters. They are not too bad on the eyes. Um, the show was good itself, but um, the characters really brought it together. It's very binge worthy. As I said, I watched it in two days. So you'll definitely get hooked. Um, you begin to hate these people called the kooks and they're kind of like the rich people on their little island. And the, guy, the people that it's said about are kind of like the poor people and they're called the pogues. And basically, moral of the story, they're looking for this treasure that one of the guys John B's dad left behind and um, I'll leave it up to you to figure out whether they find it or not and what goes on but they have just announced that a season 2 is in progress so I would get to watching season 1 so that when season 2 comes out you are fresh and you know what's happening and you can be as excited as I am to see what goes on next. The next show you might have already watched it's kind of an older one but it never got boring for me and that is Stranger Things. I don't really know how to explain it, like there's a lot of supernatural stuff. Sometimes you watch it and you just have all these questions, you're like how is that happening, like what is going on here? But it's so, it just keeps you watching it and I think there's three seasons and I've definitely finished all of them, even twice I think. But again, I love all of the main characters. I think some of them are so funny. But if you love a bit of sci-fi and a bit of drama and a bit of romance, just like everything mushed into one, then I would definitely recommend Stranger Things. I know that the last episode of the last season made me bore my eyes out. So be prepared for that when you get to the end. The next one is another kind of older one and kind of on edge about watching it at first because it wasn't really my taste but as soon as I started watching it I did get really interested in it and I think I could break out of a prison now potentially but yeah the show is prison break it's about this guy who purposely gets himself into prison to try and break out his brother who was the accused well I can't remember what it was but he was definitely wrongfully accused and he basically goes in there and like he's already pre-planned everything and you just kind of watch his journey of him trying to get his brother out. It is definitely gripping stuff. You never really know what's going to happen because there are so many like setbacks and plot twists. Did I interrupt your filming? You sure did. Yo. Do you want to say hi? Hi. I don't really know where I finished with that last point so I'm just gonna move along to the next show. The next show that I have is Never Have I Ever. Now this is really recent to Netflix and I wouldn't say it's the best show that I've ever watched. The acting is kind of questionable and it is a rather cringeworthy show but I did binge watch the whole first season in I think about three and a half hours. I literally woke up on Sunday morning and didn't get out of bed till I finished it because each episode finished and I just wanted to start the next one to know what was going on. It was overall a very entertaining series to watch. It's definitely a little bit unrealistic. I think it's about an Indian girl who is going through high school and like wants her rite of passage 
all that kind of jazz and falls for this guy who's way out of her league. In the end, they almost get together, but there's a little, a little bit of, I guess it's a bit of a plot twist at the end of the last episode, and I'm not going to spoil that, but um, you should definitely go and watch it to find out what happens in this little love triangle. Next is the docu-series, I think that's what you call it, here. Now I'm not a cheerleader, I have no interest in cheerleading, but I do like a good documentary and this one kind of caught my attention because I love seeing stories and, and I love looking at people's lives. That sound, makes me sound like a stork. It definitely gave me a different perspective on cheerleading and I realised how tough it is but also how good it is for people's like mental state and feeling of belonging and competition and stuff like that. Their coach is hardcore but there is this one guy in it and I can't remember his name but he is so positive and so funny. He basically made the whole show for me. He's just absolutely hilarious and I love him. I want to be his friend. Some of the people in that show come from difficult backgrounds or they have things going on in their life that disadvantage them and the school at Navarro really helps them with their life and so I guess that's why I found it so interesting from the start to the finish was seeing how cheerleading changed their lives and what opportunities it gave them. So if you're like me and you like a good documentary then I would definitely recommend Cheer. Okay, the next show that I'm going to tell you about is Dynasty. Now, I started watching this with a group of my friends, so we got pretty far in in a short amount of time, but we never finished it, and so I kept watching it without them because I was hooked. But one of the main characters is Jade from Victorious, and if you thought that she was a master badass in Victorious, watch this show and she is even more badass. The show is so cunning and manipulative and all the characters are really interesting to watch. Um, but I became really invested in the show and the characters and the family. Season 1 was definitely better than season 2 but I still recommend watching it. It is definitely a good one to watch. It's about a really rich kind of corrupt family and just their life and all the things that go on in it. So yeah, quite an interesting look into that kind of life. The next one that I quite enjoyed was Suits. Now I haven't finished Suits, I'm a few seasons in. There are a lot of seasons in Suits, so I have not finished them all because it kind of got a bit repetitive and and I found other shows to watch plus I didn't really have time to watch Netflix but it is really interesting it's about a guy who like fakes his way into being a lawyer but he's actually really good at it just because he's so smart as you can imagine there are a lot of things that go wrong with that but the show has a really good way of telling the story and keeping people hooked and it's really interesting to watch the relationships within that show plus Meghan Markle is in it so that's where she started. The next one that I recently just finished is Elite. There are two seasons and I finished it pretty quick because again it was super binge worthy. I just wanted to keep knowing what was going to happen next and how it was going to end. There are two seasons and both were for me really great watch. Really great to watch. <laughs> It's set in Spain, um, so if you can imagine the drama there, and it's at like a quite a upper class high school, so the amount of stuff that goes on is just insane. Some of the drama is a bit over the top, but it definitely keeps you hooked. It has a really good way of telling the story, so it gives like flash forwards into what's happening. So the whole time you're sitting there trying to figure out who did what or how it happened, and you have to wait until the last episode of each season to actually find out the whole story and for me I loved that way that the show was set out I found it super cool and it kind of made me like put together people's stories and like cross them out and be like nah it can't have been them like that show was definitely a good watch it is a little bit more R rated so I wouldn't recommend if you're a younger viewer but both times the ending really got me I did not see them coming I did not guess the right person but I did get quite frustrated during the show 
just because there's a lot of lies and conspiracy and hiding things and I don't like that so I would get really frustrated at a couple of the characters but besides that I think it's definitely one of the best shows I've watched in a while. Now this one is again an older one and you've most likely seen it if you're a teenage girl but I can't stress enough how much I loved it. There's really not much to say besides how much I loved it but that is Gossip Girl. I got way too invested in that show. I basically felt a part of the show. I would like talk at the laptop or TV, whatever I was watching it on my phone and just get like really frustrated when things didn't go right or like people didn't do what I wanted them to do. So yeah, when that finished, it was probably a good thing for me to detach myself from the TV show and back into reality. But I was quite sad when it ended because as I said, I was so invested and I just wanted to keep seeing what was happening in their lives. But all I can say is Blair and Chuck are the best power couple and I am very glad that they are together. Sorry if you're still watching that, but um, spoiler. Okay, now the last show I have is Gilmore Girls. Now there are about eight seasons in this show, I think, with like 25 episodes per season. So it's a big watch. It's taken me a long time to finish because I had to watch it in such small chunks or like take breaks from it. But once again, it's one show that I really got invested into their lives and every time I watched it I felt like I was in the show if you can like understand that if you've ever seen a show and you felt like you're in it no just me okay but it is a thoroughly entertaining show the characters are so funny it's really well written and filmed and I loved it it was one of those shows that I could put on behind my homework and just listen to. You didn't need to see it all the time, so I loved that about it. But I have just finished it now during lockdown, and I'm not really sure what to do with myself because I've finished. You start the show when Rory, the main character, is like so little, and by the time you finish, she's like getting married. And so you just watch the span of her life. And yeah, definitely one of the best shows I've watched. It did take me a while to finish it. So yeah, I definitely recommend that. Now, those are all the shows that I've watched and could think of off the top of my head to recommend to you. Let me know if you actually watch any of them and what you think. And now that I've finished all of these shows, give me some recommendations on what I should watch next. Once again, thank you for watching. Let me know if you loved my grey on grey look. I hope you've had a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. So it's so dry from talking. I don't know what's going on.